Are you a sad individual living under a prison opera house and dropping chandeliers on people's heads for fun? Well, you may want to stop because that's a crime and get yourself a podcast. How do you do that? Easy. It's with Anchor. Anchor is a totally free app and website, and you can record from your phone or your computer. You don't need fancy smancy equipment. Seriously, I have recorded podcasts from my bathtub while I was bathing. Anchor is free and super easy to use. Anchor has really simple podcasting tools. You sign up and then you start podcasting. It really is that simple. Within an hour of starting my podcast, I was already distributed on Spotify. Now I'm on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and Radio Public. So go look for the app or the website. The website is anchor.fm. And the app, just go to your friendly local app store and look up Anchor. That's A-N-C-H-O-R. Happy podcasting! Hi, it's Sarah. I just wanted to give you a heads up. This podcast will be discussing the show Silk Stockings, which premises based on sexual crimes of passion. So there will often be discussions of sexual assault. And if you're not in the headspace to listen to that, that is perfectly fine. Just wanted to give you a little warnings. Thanks. Have a hoopy day. Keep it fruity. Hello, my hoopy fruits, and welcome to the Koi Slutty Bart Fast podcast. This is a podcast that discusses music, books, movies, TV shows, and pretty much whatever else I want to talk about because it's my podcast. And hey, I can do that. But thanks for listening and have a hoopy day and keep it fruity. And we open up on something that is quite frankly pretty disgusting. A woman Trish is showing a man named Bray pictures to advertise his latest salon products there in a very fancy salon called Bray and L. And uh, basically he attempts to sexually assault her. She slaps him, he slaps her back, she manages to get away. She leaves in her car and ends up hitting a man who is coming on the way in. It turns out that the man she hit is named Len. He is a lawyer for a famous mob boss named Donnie. And Ray, sorry, I keep on mixing up the names in in my head. Ray is... Uh, giving Donnie a haircut. He's washing his hair in the sink and they're talking and then somebody comes and shoots them both. So depending on how you look at it, justice was served. Uh, Chris and Rita are now here at the crime scene and it looks like a typical mob hit, you know? I mean, why wouldn't they think that somebody... wouldn't want to kill a mobster's lawyer. But Rita, there, there's something nagging about her. About her. About. There's something about it that's nagging her. And she's just like, no, this isn't right. So she goes to a man who wrote a book on Donnie Dogs. And she talks to him. And this is after Chris basically better that she wouldn't be able to get a meeting with Donnie. And he said that if she did, he would have to buy her lunch for a week. So uh, she does it. And then she gets a dinner date with the writer whose name is Tony and is also a friend of Chris's. They... Meet the other owner of the salon, Elle, who is having a tryst with her boyfriend. And the boyfriend is not very happy to see Chris and punches him in the face. There is some jealous back and forth thing between the two men. And GT threatens Chris and Chris threatens him right back. And Chris also gets the name of Tris Donner. The woman from the salon. They meet Tris at the beach while she's taking photographs. And they found out that her car is in the shop and she has another one. And she seems very, very suspicious. 
So they go and check out the rental car and uh, it turns out that there was damage to it that would match the car of Len. So they go after her. She flees or she tries to flee, but they catch her. And then <clears throat> they have no choice but to release her because there's really no evidence. So it turns out that somebody has put a hit on Trish because they think it's vengeance for Len's death. Rita goes to Donnie Dog's strip club where he's hanging out with his friends and his dog Dutchie and he's like no no I, I wouldn't kill anybody I would do it to their face and Rita's like oh okay she has dinner with Tony it's very lovely he's apparently a very good cook and then they find out that Tony was the one that gave Rita the tip about who put the hit out on Trish and when he was there, JT was with him. Ooh. So it turns out that JT and L made plans and were each other's alibis for the murder of Ray and Len. And L was planning on taking over the shops and reaping in the products for the the profit of the products that were coming in a few months. So, they save Trish. They tackle all to the ground. Chris gets into a fist fight with who, somebody who's basically an MMA, MMA fighter. Uh, throws alcohol into his eyes and wins the fight. And they're both arrested. Yay, justice is served. Uh, sadly for Tony, Rita breaks up with him because she felt that she was getting a little bit too close for the mobster. He was, uh, apparently feeding Donnie information so that Donnie would feel closer to him so that he could feed information to Rita. Yes, that is a really bizarre thought process that I'm not even sure what's going on. But apparently he, he really liked hanging out with the mob. And Rita's like, you've sold your soul. You can't come for that. And then she walks away on the beach. The end. So I, I gotta say, this this is not one of my favorite episodes. Um, it's not one of the ones that I remember watching when I first watched the show as a kid. But honestly, there's just something about it that uh, left me a little cold. So, uh, anyway, if you have any comments, leave a message, a voice message, or an email, and tell me what you think. Have a hoopy day, and keep it fruity. Bye.